Hi, this is Auto House Hamilton TV, and I'm James, according to eyewitness reports. In this video, I will be talking about suspension geometry. We'll cover caster, camber, and toe, and look at how these adjustments apply at the front and the rear of the car. This seems like a good place to insert the title sequence. Because we live in a three-dimensional universe, there are three degrees of adjustment available to suspension engineers. In no particular order, these are known as caster, camber, and toe. Because we also have a fourth dimension in our universe, caster, camber, and toe can also change dynamically with time. Caster describes the fore-aft inclination of the suspension upright. It is the angle between a vertical line and a line drawn between the upper and lower pivot points of a McPherson strut, or the ball joints of a front suspension upright. It's difficult to see this in a parts diagram, but here's a front upright from a KN. The KN uses ball joints on its upper and lower front wishbones, so we can draw a line between those two points, and the angle between that line and the vertical is the caster. In motorcycles, the terminology is different, but the geometrical ideas are the same, and it's very easy to see what we're talking about. Here is a racing motorcycle with relatively little caster. Compare that with a chopper, which has a huge amount of caster. Yes, Janet, life's pretty cheap to that type. The use of caster was formulated in 1896 by Arthur Krebs, a man who made many contributions to the design of the motor car as we know it. Among other designs he came up with was the use of a steering wheel instead of a tiller. Anywho, caster is used to provide self-centering. When you feel your steering returning to what is hopefully dead ahead travel when you relax your grip on the steering wheel after a turn, that's caster doing its thing. Excessive caster can make the steering feel heavy due to the jacking effect. Mine's out of the gutter, please. The jacking effect means that steering a car with excessive caster causes the front wheels to raise the front of the car as you steer. Take another look at the chopper. Think what the front wheel would look like with heaps of steering angle applied. It would be almost lying on its side. Moving to straight ahead means the front axle would be lifted. And that leads neatly onto two other topics. The first, which we'll return to later, is that in a dynamic environment, things change. Changing the wheel's orientation, because of the caster, also leads to a change in camber. And camber is the second topic. Camber describes how upright or not upright a wheel is. If the wheel is perpendicular to the ground, then it has no camber. If the wheel is leaning inwards, then it has negative camber. If it is leaning outwards, it has positive camber. Modern performance and race cars have negative camber. The tops of the wheels are closer to one another than the bottoms of the wheels, and the wheels lean in. Under hard cornering, the wheels lose that negative camber. If they go positive, the tire folds in on itself and loses grip. Ideally, the outside wheel should go to neutral camber under hard cornering to maximize the contact patch, the portion of the tire that makes contact with the road surface, and therefore to maximize grip. The main limit of front wheel camber, and remember it's negative camber in a classic 911, is the bottom of the lower ball joint. If you need more negative camber, we can supply a ball joint with an off-center locating pin, which pushes the bottom location points of the McPherson strut outwards. This is what a standard ball joint looks like. And this is what a ball joint designed to give you more negative camber looks like. You can, you can see in this ball joint, the vertical pin is located away from the center of the joint. GT3s up to 997 achieve the same thing through a lower control arm that has changeable shims, allowing the length of the coffin arm to be changed. Adjustable strut top mounts allow for camber to be adjusted by moving the effective location position inwards and outwards, and caster adjustment by moving the effective locating position fore and aft. 
On a road car, too much negative camber can cause the car to tram line and follow defects in the road surface and also wander down the shape of the road from the crown to the gutter. This is also called camber. This exists to drain water off the road surface. Excessive suspension camber also has the car riding on the inner edges of the tires when traveling straight ahead. On a road car, this is not good for tire life, but on a track car, tire wear when going straight is not really a concern. The third type of adjustment is toe. If the fronts of the wheels are closer to one another than the rears, you have toe in. If the rears of the wheels are closer to one another than the fronts, you have toe out. Toe in is also referred to as positive toe, and toe out is referred to as negative toe. For track use, it is common to set up cars with front wheel toe out. This makes them twitchy or pointy. Great on track where dynamics are everything. Less great for street use, where we want cars to be a bit more relaxed in their handling, which means the driver can also be a bit more relaxed. Cars with independent rear suspension, which is every Porsche, can also have toe and camber set at the rear, and the effects are generally the same as front wheel changes. However, no car is ever set up with rear toe out, but the amount of toe in can be adjusted. Also, because toe in or out adds friction, there is a trade-off between handling setup and maximizing straight line speed, tire life, and fuel economy. By now, you should be getting the idea that suspension geometry is a matter of managing compromises. Do you want to maximize tire life, or do you want a particular handling response? Do you want to maximize cornering responsiveness, in which case you need to accept twitchiness in a straight line? The handling response that you want in corners may lead to straight line behavior that you don't like, and vice versa. Because of the sizes of the forces involved in a car's handling, static settings are not the same as dynamic settings. Also, changes to suspension geometry can have undesirable consequences. The best known of these is bump steer. Bump steer is what happens after a vehicle is lowered. You may decide to lower a car to get the center of gravity lower and reduce body roll. As a consequence, the steering arms are no longer parallel to the suspension arms, which means the front wheel is now steered in response to suspension movement. A bump steer kit is needed to restore the dynamic behavior of the front suspension system in order to remove the unwanted and unintended steering inputs. This video has been the last of a series of videos on suspension components design, and geometry. I hope you've enjoyed watching them. I've certainly enjoyed putting them together. In my next video, I look at how to make your car go better by removing parts. Thank you very much for watching.